No, no, and, and I actually like the, the analogy, the idea that there's actually uh, a group of other powerful actors. And that's definitely how the Security Council actually works. Because you have the permanent five members of the Security Council, which is the United States, Russia, France, the United Kingdom, and China. And these five actors are always going to be in every single meeting that's there. And then there's an elected 10 that comes from the rest of the membership of the United Nations. So it's 15 actors that are playing a role in making decisions that are supposed to be there to prevent any threats to emerge to international peace and security. And the permanent five members have what they call veto power, which means that they have to be satisfied for any resolution to go through the Security Council. So these powerful actors are the ones who actually guide the direction of the United Nations and the Security Council itself. So the United States trying to put forward a request for international authorization from the Security Council when they want to use military force are in effect asking a group of powerful actors, hey, can we actually do this? Does it make sense for the international community to actually support us? And there's a whole lot of uh, what we can call side payments and politics that go on around the Security Council where the United States, if it wants to do something, will actually negotiate with other actors for their votes and try to actually persuade people. Like the way that uh, the United States ended up trying to get votes for the Libyan intervention in 2011, which included actually going after a lot of those elected members. But at the same time, there actually has to be the consent of all five members. Because if they don't like what's going on, they veto it. So if there's anything that goes strongly against their own interests, they will say no. If they say no, then the Security Council doesn't act.